Welcome everyone to another Top 5 Friday. Now, I recently asked you guys what topics you would like to hear for a Top 5 Friday, and Guilty Pleasure Games was one that I really liked. Uh, that was suggested by Mark Steppen. Steppen. Thank you, Mark. I do appreciate the topic. I really love this idea. And if, But at first I was like, well, what is a Guilty Pleasure game? Because to me, you shouldn't feel guilty for playing any game. Unless it's like Leisure Suit Larry or something like that. Then I got to thinking, it's like, okay, you know, I, can, I can just do some fun. I mean, just have some fun with this one. This, these are games that if I was playing uh, and a friend or whatever came over and was like, hey, what are you playing? I'd, I'd run over to the NES or Super Nintendo and unplug it real quick and turn it off and be like, I ain't playing anything. What are you talking about? Oh, it's Friday night. Nose while I watch a brand new video. Oh, whoa. Top by Friday, top by Friday tonight. All right, number five on the list is probably the least guiltiest, pleasuriest game I would have on this list. But anyway, yeah, it's a uh, it's something I talked about before. That's Jaws. I, so many people hate this game. Uh, I don't. It's it gets it's not good. It, no, it's not good, but it's not bad either. It's just sometimes you just want to shut off your brain and just shoot a bunch of fish. And that's what you do on here. You shut off your brain and you shoot a bunch of fish. It gets mind-numbing, sure. Uh, it's very boring at times, sure. But there's also something soothing about it. It's, it's, it's this weird state of quantum flux between being soothing but also being frustrating at the same time. It's just so strange. It's weird. I can't explain it. It's not... I'm going to go through this again, All right? It's an RPG, really. You fight a bunch of fish, you collect uh, shells to up your power. There's random encounters uh, with enemies, uh, and you basically, for the whole 20 minutes, just level up your character so you're powerful enough to defeat Jaws at the end of the game. You know what? I'm going to be playing Jaws, and I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm playing Jaws. Not now. I've got to finish this video, but maybe when I'm done. Number four on the list is this bad boy right here. Give it to me by Jason Lambert. Thank you once again, Jason. I want an episode, but uh, yeah, Action 52. This, I can objectively say, I hate using objective to describe any game because it's all subjective, but no, objectively though, this game is bad. It sucks. It's not even, well, these games, mostly every one of you, I'm sure, knows what Action 52 is. It's a collection of 52 games, all poorly made. You can't even really classify many of them as games, but they are all just basically unplayable. I like to put this in sometimes just to torture myself. If I'm just bored one day, I'll literally play Action 52 because I like to sometimes just experience uh, how awful it really is. And you can watch videos on it, and you can see by the videos that it's really bad. But until you've actually played it and know how it controls, you'll never truly understand how bad this game, or these games, really are. And so sometimes I do stick this in, and I... I don't know why, I just... There's something about it. I have vague memories of this game. I don't know, I don't think we ever rented it. Because I know that one, you know, one of the, the, the stores that we used to, they would get some of the unlicensed games for rental. I don't know if we ever rented this. I feel like I was over somebody's house and they had it. Because I just, there's, there's some games in here that just remind me of back then. And That's a text message. All right, number three on my list is a Game Boy game. And that is NFL Quarterback Club. This is not good. But... Bless my mom's heart. She, I was really into watching football as a kid. I loved it. Uh, it's so one, I think one day, it was for my birthday, she got me NFL Quarterback Club, not really knowing what it was or anything. It's not actual football, but even if it was actual football on the Game Boy, it, there's no way it would be good. This game is basically a series of mini games. You're the quarterback and you're going through quarterback drills. So you have like three or four different drills that you have to do. And all of them were just completely boring, except for one. I did get a little bit of joy out of, and that was the accuracy. So you just basically try to hit these targets. I say basically way too much, but you try to hit these targets at varying 
uh, yards down the field. And it's it's minutes and minutes and minutes and minute, minute, minute of fun. Could you imagine getting this for your birthday and getting about a minute's worth of gameplay out of it and then just not even wanting to have anything to do with it anymore? That was me. That was me. That was me. Well, as it, as it is with a lot of these games that we grew up with, what ends up happening? Even if the game is bad, we have memories with it and we have nostalgia for it. There are tons of bad games, still some on this list, that I do have nostalgia for, a lot of nostalgia for. And I remember just sitting on the couch, just trying to get as much enjoyment as I could out of this damn thing and failing miserably. But occasionally I will play this and it just kind of puts me back in that mind frame back then when I was a kid. Play it for a couple minutes and just reminded my reminded me yourself of that of those of that childhood, right? So I still enjoy enjoy putting it in from time to time, knowing full well that it's not very good. And speaking of games that are not very good, Bible Adventures. And for those of you who have watched the channel for a very long time, you'll understand the reasoning behind this. If you're new, you're watching this video for the first time. Uh, well, everyone's watching this video for the first time, unless you're watching it for the second time. If you're new to the channel and never watched a video on this channel, you're probably thinking yourself, Bible Adventures, what the hell? My cousin Chris rented this one time, often on Friday nights. We would rent a video game for the Nintendo or the Super Nintendo. And uh, one particular week, it was Chris's turn to rent a game. And his mother convinced him that, hey, it's a good idea for you to rent a wholesome game based on the Bible because you guys are playing a bunch of devil games like Mega Man and stuff. So yeah, he brought he brings home this pile of turd and it's not a very good game. It's from Wisdom Tree. It's um, a off-brand unlicensed game for the NES. It is objective, I'm not gonna say that again. It's not very good in my opinion, but there are parts of it that I still play because of the nostalgia factor. We played this all night because we had nothing else to do. We had to make the best of it. And so the Noah's Ark part in particular is the one that I remember the most. Just going around collecting the animals, trying to put them in the ark. I let him have it when he brought this home too. I was like, are you kidding me with this? You, uh, you rented a Bible game. Why would you do that? And then cut to five minutes later, we're playing it. Oh, you gotta get the snakes. Oh, you gotta get the, 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 the goat. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's what kids do, right? You make the best of it, you got to. It isn't like today where you can just turn it off and then just download something. Kids today have it so easy. Back then, it's like, nah, the video store is closed. We're not returning it and getting a new one. So yeah, that's number two, Bible Adventures. I, it still is as bad of a game it is as it is. It gives me warm cockles in my heart. That, that, did, that didn't really make much sense, did it? All right, so we're down to number one on the list. This one actually really is a good game, but it's kind of the subject matter. I definitely would not want anyone at my school to know that I was playing Little Mermaid. Man, if any of my friends back then if any of my friend knew back then that I was playing Little Mermaid on the NES, uh, I would have gotten beat up again, again. No, I'm just kidding. I never got beat up as a kid because people didn't really want to be around me, even to beat me up. We rented it. I never owned it, but we did rent it. And I want to say we rented it a couple of times. I think what ended up happening actually was my sister was like, well, you guys always get to pick the games. I want to pick a game this time. And so she went to the rental store and picked out Little Mermaid. And of course I didn't. I was like, what are we doing? Are we really gonna rent Little Mermaid? I wanna rent Mega Man 5! And my grandmother was just like, no, you better give your sister a chance to pick her game out. And I'm like, all right, whatever. I mean, what can you do, right? Me and Chris were angry, but Chris has no room to talk considering he rented Bible Adventures. I had an impeccable record of renting games. Like I, I no duds, no duds here. And to be fair, my sister didn't have a dud with this one either. Because when we got home, it was actually kind of fun. But it's made by Capcom, so how could it not be? They know how to make games. Even if it's based on Little Mermaid, which actually it's not even a bad movie. And we watched it and I liked it. I'm, like, I'm sitting, I'm trying to, I'm not, I'm, look, you know I'm not going to front. I like The Little Mermaid. It was, it was good back then. It's still good now. There's nothing wrong with it. You know what? I, I'm not going to. 
It's not like my balls are shrinking just because I like the little mermaid. I don't have to sit here in front. I don't give a damn. I like the little mermaid. Do something about it. I like this one. Do something about it. You don't you guys don't care. I'm making a big deal about it. You guys honestly don't care. Probably because most of you played this too. It's not even a guilty pleasure. I don't give a damn. I just thought this would be a fun video to make. That's what it boils down to. Little Mermaid is great. Yeah, you can beat the game in like 20 minutes. Like it is super easy. And maybe that's what kind of should lead it into the more guilty pleasure side because you don't really have to have much skill to beat this thing. It's 20 minutes, you're done. It's designed for four year old girls, but it's good and I like it. And I still play it all the damn time. In fact, I might play it on the next stream, who knows? might get crazy with it. Anyway, so thank you so much for all your continued support and watching this video. And I hope that uh, you guys have a great new year. Uh, this has been, wow, well, one hell of a year, right? 2021, last day of 2021. Thank God this year's over, am I right? I don't know, I, 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 you know what? I think we should stop saying that, honestly. We said it, what, 2020, 2021? Seems like every year we're at the end of the year we're saying, thank God that year's over. What's the point, right? I mean, what's the point in living if we're gonna keep saying that? Uh, I don't know, I think we should change or, I think we should change, stop. Stop doing that, right? Let's, let's stop wishing the years were over because before we know it, we're all gonna be in the grave and we're not gonna have any more years left. How long are we gonna keep this up? Maybe we should just stop letting people tell us that we need to be afraid. Turn off the news, that's their job. Be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. Stop letting the world beat you down. You know what, how about this? You make 2022 your year, despite what the world is trying to say otherwise, right? You make 2022 your year you have it in your hands and your power go out and do something about it and that way at the end of 2022 you're not saying i'm glad this year is over you're saying i can't wait for the next one because it's going to be even better all right you guys take care and i truly wish that you have the best 2022 of all time or the best year of two you know what i mean